Welcome to St. Peter and Zion Lutheran Churches. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday out of Pentecost. The Old Testament reading for this, the sixth Sunday out of Pentecost, is from Isaiah chapter 55. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, make it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle comes to us from Romans chapter 8. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption of sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. In the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And great crowds gathered round him, so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path. The birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what he has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The technology that tractors and combines have today is amazing. Looking at today just compared to 20 years ago is amazing as well. My great-grandfather believed that a planter should not have more than two rows because you could not look over your shoulder to make sure it was working properly. The whole point of this technology is for the farmer to do what all businesses want to do. Get the best return on the investment. You want to invest in seed, equipment, fertilizers, and other chemicals that as you get the most cost-effective yield. On the other hand, you do not want to waste any of your investment. First century farmers in Israel didn't have all the technology that we have today, but they still wanted to get the most they could from their investment. They would make sure that all the seed they sowed fell on good soil. They would avoid throwing seed on hard rock roads, rocky ground, or thorns. They wanted all the seed to produce a good crop. This morning we heard Jesus tell a parable about a different kind of sower. The people who heard Jesus tell the parable would say that the sower was rather careless. Some seed fell along the path, other seeds fell on rocky ground, and still other seeds fell among the thorns. This sower is sowing the seed everywhere. Later, Jesus took the disciples aside and explained the parable. The seed is hearing the word of God. The careless sower indicates God's generosity and his mercy. The proclamation of the word of God is for all people in all places and in all times. God our Savior desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. The careless sower could be anyone who shares the word of God. It could be an apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, the head of the household or even just one friend sharing God's word with another. In each case, Jesus has promised that the Holy Spirit will be at work when the sower shares the word of God. The teaching of the parable is that those who proclaim God's word are generous with it. They throw the word of God everywhere. Different people, though, respond differently when they hear the word of God. That is the main illustration of the parable. Jesus spoke the response into four different categories. The well-traveled path, the rocky ground, the thorny ground, and finally, the good earth. Jesus began with those who simply reject the word. He said, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. That is what's sown along the path. Although God wants to save everyone, there are those who reject the word and resist the Holy Spirit. They remain in unbelief and under God's judgment by their own fault. Eventually, God allows the devil to take the word away from them. They have hardened their heart against the work of the Holy Spirit by simply refusing to believe. The hardened soil of the path reminds us that there is a real battle going on for the lives of men, women, and children. Satan makes it his business to take the word of the kingdom away from us. This was his strategy at the beginning. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You should not eat of any tree in the garden? The evil one's first words to Eve replaced God's word with doubt. 
Already the evil one was coming and snatching away the word that was sown in Eve's heart. The hardened soil and the birds represent the devil snatching the word and taking it away from us. Then there is the rocky soil. At first, the effect of the word on the rocky soil seems hopeful, but then tragedy strikes. Jesus said, As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. Here the seed produces results for a while. This type of person receives the word with joy. He joins the local congregation. He may even become quite active. Then something comes along and tests the faith and he falls away. The rocky soil is really troublesome. Over the past half century, we have seen the church in North America and Europe promote the rocky soil. Very often the reason that many churchgoers do not have deep roots in the word is that the leaders of the church do not provide opportunities that grow those roots. Many congregations have grown by focusing on marketing, fun, and entertainment. However, too many congregations have focused so hard on fun and entertainment that they forgot to proclaim the truth of the word of God. At first, they grew like gangbusters. But then came a challenge, and they fell apart. It is just as Jesus said. They endure for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises, on account of the word, immediately they fall away. The church in North America and Europe has a lot of repenting to do. I pray that they get back to proclaiming the word so that their members can once again have roots that go deep into the words of God. The third scenario illustrates a similar tragedy. Jesus said, As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. Once again, the seed sprouts. Once again, this type of person joins a local congregation. The problem here is that the cares of this world are more important than the word of the kingdom. A late part on Saturday night or even late night television is more important than being rested up enough to receive God's divine service. County fairs, athletic contests, and other extracurricular activities are more important than Bible class or family devotion. Basically, there are so many things to do in this world that God's word becomes an afterthought instead of a priority. The thorns represent the world enticing us away from the salvation proclaimed in the word of the king. The last type of soil illustrates the fruit that God's word can bear. Jesus said, As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit in yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another third. This time the roots of God's word run deep. It thrives and produces a harvest. In fact, the numbers that Jesus used are miraculous yields for that time and place. Notice though, that even the good soil is dead under God's word, takes root in it. The power comes from God, and he uses his word to distribute that power. God works in us so we read or hear the word. He brings us into his family as that very same word combines with the waters of holy baptism to join us to Christ and his crucifixion. He sustains and strengthens our faith with the word combined with the bread and the wine as he offers himself up to us in his body and blood. 
These are the means of grace whereby God works the power of his word in us. Jesus makes it very clear in this parable that it is the deep roots of the seed that produce the fruit. Then he tells us that the seed is the word of the kingdom, and the roots are the understanding of that word. Therefore, when Jesus talks about the depth of the roots, he is talking about the depth of our understanding of the word of the kingdom. He is also talking about the effect that the Holy Spirit has as he works through the Word. When the roots of the Word of the Kingdom run deep in us, we see that all of Scripture points us to the salvation we have in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Kingdom reveals the holy life of the Savior, a life that he lived in our place because we could not keep the law of God. The word of the kingdom reveals the holy death of the Savior, a death that satisfied God's holy and righteous justice against our sin. The word of the kingdom reveals the resurrection of the Savior, a resurrection that assures us that the holy life and innocent death of the Savior were accepted as payment in full for all of our sins. The devil, the world, and our own sinful nature want to drive us away from our Savior. Their first step in alienating us from God is the same now as it always was, including in Eden. Did God actually say? They constantly strive to prevent the growth of the roots of the Word. They constantly make the case against regular church attendance and regular study. When we think it is not important to be theologians of the word of the kingdom. We are playing right into the devil's hand. That is exactly what he wants. Humans who are weak because the word of the kingdom has not put deep roots into the hearts. Jesus encourages us with the words, he who has ears, let him hear. Hearing is how the Holy Spirit gives understanding to us. How he causes the word of the kingdom to grow deep into our hearts. Hearing is how the Holy Spirit reveals the salvation of Jesus Christ to us. It is as we heard in the Old Testament reading this morning. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. May the word of the kingdom dwell and grow deep into our hearts. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Now the peace of God which surpasses understanding, keep your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, hear the prayers of your people. Grant to us all things needful and beneficial, and keep us from us all things harmful. Let us pray. Holy Lord, Almighty God, you are the strength of the hills and the hope of the ends of the earth. Give to our hearts your perfect peace, that we may not be anxious nor live in fear, but rest all our hopes, dreams, and desires upon your merciful goodness. Lord, in mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, mighty God, you send forth water from the, upon the earth, that it may bring forth abundant fruit and feed our bodies with all that we need. Help us to be wise and faithful in the use of the rich bounty of the earth, that the poor may be supplied and that we never fail to give thanks to you for all you have given us for this body and life. Lord, in mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, mighty God, your word will not return to you empty, but will accomplish your purpose in sending it. By your Holy Spirit, make our hearts good soil for your word to be planted, that we may give evidence of a sturdy faith and show forth in our lives the good works you have called us to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, mighty God, your spirit accomplishes the witness 
of your people who speak your word before the world. Grant success to the missionary and mission planter, to every pastor and church worker, that those who hear may believe and those who believe may bear the good fruit of faith in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear the prayer. Holy God, mighty Lord, you have given power to the nations and those who govern to act for the good of your people. Bless our president, the Congress, our governor, and all those elected and appointed to lead us, that justice may prevail and your people may be free to live at peace with all people. Lord, in mercy, hear the prayer. Holy God, mighty Lord, you know how weak and frail we are. Give to those afflicted in mind, body or soul, the fullness of your healing grace, that according to your will, they may be restored to health. Hear us for all those suffering or recovering from the pandemic's ravages, for those who have requested our prayers, and for those we name in our hearts. Lord, in mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, mighty Lord, you have granted us great riches and gifts. Keep our hearts from being overburdened by the things of this mortal life, whether in time of plenty or in time of want. Deliver us from persecution and sustain us from all tribulation, that our hearts may be fixed upon the true treasure of your grace. Accept the tithes and offerings we bring as part of our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving for all your goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In him, with him, and through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, both now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us today.